It's absolutely pissing it down right now. Autumn is well and truly upon us here in Canada. The weather looks a bit shit. The result today was shit. And uh, I don't know if I really do feel like shit after watching that. Um, is there a case to say that the 5-1 really did add insult to injury for us? Is there a case to say that the 5-1 wasn't a true reflection of the game. I think I'll choose the latter option. Uh, it finished Liverpool 5, West Ham United 1 in the Carabao Cup. And it means that we crash out to Liverpool yet again by the exact same scoreline. I can't believe it, really, that we've done that to, on, like, repeated that, a 5-1 loss at Anfield. There is a case to say that there is some corruption from the governing bodies. I don't know how we keep drawing these top six teams, but that's not the corruption part. The corruption part is the refereeing and the lack of VAR throughout the cup competition in general. The fact that you don't even have it until the semi-final is absurd to me because VAR had a really, really, really big non-existent say if you could even call it that in this game because had it been there things could have changed the events of the game could have changed decisions would have gone against Liverpool more than in their favour I, I think we played a lot better honestly than we did in the game against Chelsea at the weekend we really did we looked a little bit sharper we looked a little bit more focused on what we were doing we even took the lead in the game for goodness sake even if it was by fortune. I don't know. I don't know what, what happened, to be honest. And things just went downhill quite quickly in the second half. Let me go through the team news. It was Fabianski in goal, Sofal and Cresswell as the fullbacks, Tadebo and Kilman as centre backs, Soler and Alvarez in the pivot, Somerville and Bowen on the wings with Suchek going a little bit higher up, and Ings as striker. Overall, not really a bad lineup. In the opening few minutes, I saw Cresswell struggle to really get the ball forward quick enough. Um, there's a reason probably why he's no longer our starting left back. Good depth option, though, for this season. Bowen fired on target from distance, and it was come to be saved by Kelleher. Somerville was impressive throughout the whole game. He made some really good runs, controlled the ball very well from crosses and from in his own area of the field, and looked dangerous. Ings did put the ball into the net, but he was offside. And the decision wasn't one to argue with. That was a good decision. He was offside. He was too early in getting the ball. West Ham did make it 1-0, though. And it was one of the, those chaos goals that Nick Killington referred to back in the day. Back in the day being a few months ago. Scruffy in the box. Endo kind of passes the ball sideways. And Kwanza puts it into the net as the man who had the last touch. It was Alvarez who was trying to claim the goal. But there was no way he could given how it went in. The equaliser really didn't bother me when it went in. Because I thought this was going to be given for an offside. I was very convinced that it wasn't actually going to be given. But then it was. Um, gap post stayed onside. How? I don't know. Draw the lines, please, someone, for this. But I don't know how he stayed onside. Um, the ball found its way, like, in a chaotic manner, if we can even use that word, to Jota, who headed in from close range. Fabianski was on course again to drop another stinker. Against Liverpool. Anfield is a cursed place for Fabianski. It really is. I swore that was off. But no VAR. Again. Um, let's talk about some of the players actually in that first half. I thought the defence looked a lot better with Kilman and JCT in it. I really did. Soler works very hard on the field. He wanted to make an impact. He almost had his Pablo Fornals moment when he struck from distance. 
Uh, Alvarez looks half the player he was last season. I'm sorry, but he was not getting close to any players enough. He was not carrying the ball. He was not acting competently defensively at times. But it was 1-1 at half time, and that was okay. But the second half, you could have bet your life this was going to happen. We were going to concede within the first five minutes of that half. Because it's a trait that we've continued from the Moyes era. We've got to start second halves off without conceding in the opening 10 minutes because that is our Achilles heel right now. This was a terrible goal to give away, really. It was too easy for Jota to get the ball through to him and to finish it. Alvarez could have done better. He could have helped to close that down a bit better. Salah came on for Liverpool and at that, that point I was just thinking, now, nah, forget it. Forget it. Pakatar on for Suchik and Antonio on for Ings. Positive about Pakatar is that we've realised he can play better in a deeper central role. Suchik didn't really have a bad game as such, but he didn't do enough to contribute to the point where he could change things. So him coming off was fine. There was a very, very frustrating Sunday League-esque moment, if I can even call it that as well, in, in the um, second half. West Ham was deep in the box with the ball. Antonio tested the keeper. Then Kilman got the ball. And all he had to do was really shoot it anywhere to put this in. And he didn't. He tried to round the keeper and missed. Then a few moments later, I swear that Samakas handballed for Liverpool. I, he was going like this, chest. I swear it came off his hand. And one of the West Ham players even protested it for a minute. Again, Liverpool had a goal given that shouldn't have been. And we were denied a handball. Soler put a shot over the bar as well. We just resorted to striking from distance at this point. Because we knew we probably couldn't get it into the box. Salah just had to score and make it 3-1. Yeah. I know. Then Alvarez got sent off for a double yellow. He's becoming a yellow card merchant. And we can't have the carelessness. Right now. What's got into him? I'm not even sure. West Ham then did make some subs. Soler off for Irving and Kudus came in for Bowen. Irving is humbling a free transfer from La Liga, a £30 million plus Mexican international, and a Czech midfielder who is loved by the fans, and a loanee from PSG, possibly. And Irvin came from Austria, Klagenfurt, and the hearts of Midlothian Academy. And this guy's already putting in some positive signs. Irvin, actually, I said, would score a... It was a loose prediction, but I said that he would score an absolute cracker in the game. And he did shoot from distance again. First ever shot for West Ham was on target, bear in mind, when he came on against Chelsea. Gatpo then made it 4-1 and then 5-1. It wasn't a 5-1 type of game, to be honest. It didn't feel like that. I'm not going to say that we were undeserving of the loss because we did do some things wrong, but we weren't deserving to lose 5-1. There are, there is a spark somewhere and there are signs of life in this team. We just have to find what the gasoline is to make that spark come into a fire that burns bright throughout the team. What is the spark? It'll be someone... Or some couple of players who will probably provide that. Somerville was class though. He definitely gets to start in place cemented from now on till an indefinite period of time for me. The midfield is one place we have to balance and work on. The defence not so much. I've said it again. Who starts in the midfield against Brentford? Could you even start Andy Irvin in there? I would be tempted to. It's not even mad. I repeat, it's not even mad to say that he could start there. Soler actually looked all right. Alvarez. Mm. If he's playing badly and making errors, he'll have to be dropped out. Some decisions have to be made about the midfield, but every other unit looks quite good. The wings look fairly strong. And the defence looks a lot better than what it has been against Chelsea. Just need to really chop and change a bit, but Lopetegui can't afford to keep doing that. Because I've got Brentford and then Ipswich. If we lose these two games, he's in trouble. And we're in trouble. 
consider tonight a free hit and then consider the weekend's games to come a serious business.